What's up, YouTube? In this blog right here, I talk about case management and things that you can do to streamline your processes. Because let's face it, as paralegals, we're faced with many tasks every day pulling us in a million different directions, and it's up to us to find the most elegant solutions to get us from point A to point B. Something that we've been doing over and over again may not be working for us anymore. And as technology evolves, so should our efficiency processes. So I've got two solutions for you today. One of them I talked about in that blog. The other one I talk about in this video right here, where we talk about case management, bait stamping documents, labeling them, bookmarking them, getting them into an index, and everything that you need to map out your cases for efficiency. So if you're interested in these solutions, keep watching. The first solution for today is setting up action wizards in Adobe Pro, a step-by-step -step process for you to set up any process that you need to flow to run your document production processing. Because let's face it, I can have a 10,000 page document production and going through all the processes that I need to to produce it to opposing counsel is mind numbingly boring. It's like watching paint dry. I don't have time to do that. Action Wizards really help me with that. They help my paralegal coaching clients with that. And I've had lots of paralegals tell me that this shaves hours off of their document production time. And of course, be sure to stick around because I've got a bonus Adobe solution for you after you are done processing that voluminous document production. Document productions for paralegals can be really time consuming. And when we're processing those documents on our desktop computer, it's really taking up a great amount of resources. It's taking up a lot of resources on our computer, really slowing it down. And it's taking up our valuable time because we're having to wait for all of those processes to complete. So how many of you are billing by the hour and have had a lot of your hours cut due to processing documents for voluminous document production. So if you've had your time cut due to a voluminous document production, I want you to comment below um, hashtag paralegal problems because yep, that's a paralegal problem. So I've got an elegant solution for you and for you Mac users, this is hands down the best solution for you processing documents because you have the very fortunate ability to have multiple desktops. But before I jump to my computer and show you how to set up an action wizard, let's start with a checklist of things that we're going to need first. Just a couple of foundational items. First thing first, you're going to need to put all of your documents, all of your PDFs that you want to bring into an action wizard need to be in a single folder because you want to bring in as many of those documents as you can as once so you don't have to add those files later. Next, you need to know what those processes are that you want an action wizard to run. Now you can run all sorts of action wizards, but for this tutorial, I'm specifically, specifically going to go step by step through setting up an action wizard when it comes to document production. So what do I need to do? I need to bait stamp my documents. I need to optimize my documents. I need to save my documents as binder one, and I'll show you why you need to do that in the tutorial. Then I need to remove all of the metadata and bookmarks and everything that I don't want opposing counsel to see from my document. I need to sanitize it. And then finally, I need to save it again, and I'm gonna save it as the final product. And again, I'll show you why here in a minute in this tutorial. So now that we have those things set up, let's hop over to the computer and go step-by-step step on how to set up your action wizard. Okay, diving right into Acrobat 2017 for Mac users. I'm going into tools and typing action wizard. Then I pull up the action wizard tool and click the add and open button. Now it's the time to bring in all of the documents from that one folder that I told you to make. How you want to bring in your documents is completely up to you. You can click add files or drag and drop. For this part, I'm going to open the one file and then bring in all of the other documents that I want brought into my action wizard here. That's just easier for me because I'm a Mac user. Windows, you actually have it a little bit easier than what I do. So I'm gonna bring all of this over into my document. 
and you'll see here that I have all of my pages that I need to run my action wizard. And as a bonus, I've already got the bookmarks from all of the documents I brought in. In this action wizard tool, you'll see that you have manage actions right next to new actions. These are preset managed wizards for you that Adobe already creates for you. But we're gonna create a whole new one here. So go ahead and click new action. And it will bring over the new actions that you can create. So let's just go through a few of these real quick. Got this content tab right here. And if we bring it down, we'll see all these tools available to us that we can bring over into our action. We don't need any of those right now. So let's click pages and we see we can add footer or header, or if we scroll down, add Bates numbering, which is what we want in this particular action. So we click that button and it brings it right over into our right panel, which we're not going to deal with right now because we're still bringing in actions. If I click forms, we don't need to detect any forms in any field, so we don't need that. Recognize text, recognize text using OCR, no. Optimize scan pages, yes. We're gonna click that button and bring over optimized scanned pages. Go ahead and click protection. And you can apply redactions right here if you want. We're not going to do this, but we do need to sanitize the document. So click that and bring it over into our action tools. We're done with protection. Now on to document processing. We really don't need anything in here either, but if you wanted to, there are some other tools in here, including create books marks from structures. So if we click this and then go down to accessibility, it's nothing really that we're going to need in here. And so if we go down to save and export, this saves it. You can export it as a JPEG, as a TIFF file, anything you need to. We're gonna click save and bring it over because we needed to do that. And if we go to go to, we're gonna see a whole bunch more tools that's available to us. Uh, fill and sign, create PDF, export PDF, comment, protect, prepare form, prepare stamps. Um, lots and lots of tools here available to you. Um, and then we have here at the bottom even more tools that are available to you. So you can do all sorts of things in these action wizards. Sky is really the limit, guys. Just play around with these different tools and see what you come up with. So let's focus on this right side here. Now, remember I said that we needed to save twice. So let's bring over another action button for save. Click this button right here, but we don't want it in that position. So we're gonna bring this tool up under optimize scan pages, cause that's where we wanted it. Now we're really gonna focus on this right side here. We've got all of our actions, and if we go to add Bates numbering, oh, I'm sorry, go back up top, look at the folder structure, we, we know where we want it. We don't need to add any files because we already brought all of our files in, but if we needed to, we can add our files from here, including from online accounts, which includes OneDrive, folks. So if we go back to Bates numbering, we're gonna see that we have a specific settings and prompt user. Well, we need to set our settings. So go ahead and click this button and you'll see that it brings up the add header and footer, which is where we add our baits. Now there is some save settings. Um, if you haven't already done so, you can do that, but let's go ahead and just put in our baits numbering right here. We set our digits, we set our number and we click okay. Well, it took out our prefix. So we need to go back in there and add our prefix for PP, which is plaintiff's production. Then click OK. We're gonna adjust our margins just a little bit, bottom 0 0.3, and change the appearance, um, change the font first, sorry about that. I wanna make sure people can read it and then change the appearance to shrink the document to make sure it doesn't override anything at the bottom text or graphics. Click OK. And it looks like we're pretty set on our Bates numbering. So now we can click OK and it will save this setting in our action wizard. Like I said before, if you've already got a pre-action saved up there, then click your plaintiff's production or numbering or however you saved it. And then we've added our Bates number, so we're gonna click OK. 
that we set the specific settings for our Bates numbering, you might want to consider the fact of whether or not this is initial or supplemental. If it's supplemental, set up another action wizard. But for this one, we're going to uncheck prompt user because we've already set our settings for the initial document production. So now it's time to go to optimize scan pages and check out those specific settings right here. All right, we're going to do color grayscale just the way that it is, monochrome just the way that it is, but here are the settings if you wanted to change it. You can change it to JPEG or zip, monochrome. You can change it to these things right here, which actually I don't know anything about. We're gonna leave the size where it is. We don't need it to be too high of a quality. Don't need any filters. We're gonna go ahead and recognize the text. Everything looks good right here. So we can just go ahead and click OK from this screen. All right, now we've set those specific settings. We really don't need it to prompt the user anymore. So we're gonna uncheck prompt user. Now we're going down to this save. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky. We're gonna go ahead and click specific settings. And here's where we get to name the files. So you see where it says keep original file names and there's a field where it says insert before. Right there in that field, I want you to type binder one. Then we want to save files as Adobe PDF. We don't need to embed an index. We don't need a PDF optimizer. We don't need to export the files as an alternative file. So we wanna go ahead and click OK. So now that we did the specific settings for the first save, we go down to sanitize document, but there's no specific settings in here because sanitize document is pretty straightforward. So then we have the last save and again, we have to go to specific settings. And in here, right here in the field of insert before, you're going to add your very first page number, your PP00, however many zeros you have and one. Now you're gonna go back and rename this file later on, but this is an indicator that this is being put in the final product. This is after we sanitize the document and remove all of our bookmarks and anything else that we don't want opposing counsel to see. All of these other settings are completely fine. We're not changing them and we're gonna go ahead and click OK. Now we have everything that we need in our action wizard. So we're gonna click this save button and this allows us to save the action wizard however we want to name it so it's, we can easily navigate back to it the next time we want to process a document production. So I'm just gonna name this doc production wizard. I'm not gonna, you don't have to put anything in the action description, but I'll go ahead and put plaintiff's document production. And then we'll go ahead and click the save button. So it saves it as an action wizard on the action list on the right hand side, you'll see the very first action is Doc Production Wizard. So if we go ahead and click Doc Production Wizard, you'll see that it brings in the document production wizard for the files we want to be processed. We don't need to add any files because we already added them all in and all of our actions are right there here below. You'll see this final report, which isn't hyperlinked yet, but it will be here soon. Press that start button and let it ride. It's gonna flow for as long as it needs to and running through all of your action steps, which you see are marked off there. Now we have a complete full report. Voila, action name, doc production wizard, file name, everything succeeded in our action wizard. Our Bates numbering, optimize scan pages, save, sanitize, save again. All of it is right there in an actionable list that you can fold in or you can bring it out. You can bring it into your actual document if you need it to. You can save it anywhere on your network that you may need to. But this says that everything that you did succeeded and you set up an action wizard. Now if I navigate back to the folder that I pulled all of my documents from, I can see that I've got two saved documents and the last one is the one with the bait stamp. That's the one that we are done with, the full final version. There is nothing in here that opposing counsel can't see. So I have the original native file and then I have the file that we're going to produce to opposing counsel. 
In the original file, I had all of those bookmarks and the metadata. But if I open the side panel right here and navigate to bookmarks, you'll notice that I don't have any left in here. I don't have any metadata that I need to worry about co opposing counsel seeing. You'll also see that if I navigate through this document, it has all of my Bates numbers in there and everything that I need to go ahead and produce this document to opposing counsel. See how simple that was? Now let's take it one step further. I've got another trick up my sleeve. I wanna show you something else in Adobe Pro. How many of you are working with experts or consultants that annotate your PDF documents? How many of you are annotating your own PDF documents or your attorney is annotating the PDF documents? All right, I may have 10,000 pages of a document that's been reviewed, but perhaps I've only got 60 pages of those that are actually annotated. So I've got a way for you to create a comment summary to pull only those key documents and it'll save you and your attorney valuable time later. So let's get started. So we're gonna take the same document that we used for the production. We're gonna act as if either we're annotating it or an expert is annotating it. So I'm just gonna go through this really quick and put in a bunch of comment summaries and different objects to mark it up just a bit so that we can run a comment summary. All done. Now I can click this comment button right here and go over to the ellipses on the right hand side. If you click that, you'll navigate down to create comment summary. If you click comment summary, then you can see all of the different layouts that Adobe gives you for your comment summary. Now we're going to choose one in particular that makes the most sense to us. And to me, that's document and comments with connector lines on a single page. If I've got separate pages, then I'm just toggling back and forth between the different pages. I can sort the comments by page, type, date, or author. If you have multiple authors, maybe this is something that you want. For this tutorial, I want it as page. For my font size, I wanna go ahead and move everything to large to make it much easier to read. I want to include all comments. And most importantly, I want to uncheck pages containing no comments. I don't need 57 pages of unannotated documents. I only need key documents. Connector lines, I leave it as black, but you can do anything fancy that you want. For me, black is enough for me. So exit out of that, opacity is always at 100%, and click Create Comment Summary. And voila, you've got all of the key documents pulled out of that document production for anything that was annotated. Now you can place this in a binder or you can put it into OneDrive into your SharePoint. And this is a completely searchable document because remember it was optimized when you put together that document production. So if I go through here, I can see all of the key documents, which in the last document was 57 pages and this one is only four. And guess what? There's an action wizard for that too. And now that I've given you a step-by-step -step guide on how to do an action wizard, you can set up your own comment summary action wizard. I hope you liked this video today and I hope that it helped to streamline some of your processes. If it did, please give this video a big thumbs up and if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. Of course, follow me on social media. I'm at Paralegal Coach underscore Misty on Instagram and at Arrow Consultants on Facebook. As always, guys, have a wonderful day. Have a fantastic rest of your week and a lovely weekend. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.